In this session, I'll take you through the cash flow statement of Adani Enterprises Limited. To start with, we have cash flow from operating activities. It starts with uh, net profit before tax. The reason why it is starting with net profit before taxes only then we'll be able to show what is the taxes paid because companies makes provision, but we should know what is the tax they pay. Provision can be created and simply a liability can be created and parked. But to what extent taxes have been paid that may not be directly visible in the statement of profit and loss. And that's the reason the cash flow statement also mandates that we should start with net profit before tax. Okay. So these two figures already we have seen in the respective uh, P and L. Then we do various adjustments, various items are added back for reasons like they are non-cash item or for the reasons like they are not related to this operating activities. I'll just touch on some of them. Depreciation is added back because it is a non-cash item. Interest and dividend from investments is subtracted, is subtracted because they are not supposed to be under operating activity they should go to investment activity. So it will be subtracted here and it will find place in investment activity. Unrealized exchange rate differences. So in the previous year, it is added back. It means in the previous year in p and it would have been shown as exchange loss, but there is no cash outflow. Okay. It can be mainly on account of mark to market. And in the current year, they would have recognized mark to market gain. So that has been deducted now. Because uh, there is no money realization, it is only because of mark to market effect. Then we have loss or profit from LLPs. They are all attributable to investment activities. So for that reason, it is removed. Net gain on sale of current investment that is related to investment activity. Then a loss or profit on sale of property, plant and equipment. Again, they are related to investment activity, but they were given effect. They were given effect in the statement of profit and loss while computing the profit, but they are not attributed to operating activity. So that is the reason we are adjusting them. Then bad debts, provision for doubtful debts on loans and advances. So this is basically created uh, by way of provision. Okay, so there is no cash outflow in that part. Then liabilities no longer required return back. So they were created to PNL, but to that extent, there is no cash inflow. Finance cost is adjusted because it should be shown under financing activity. Interest income is adjusted because it should be shown under investment activity. Impairment, again, there is no cash outflow. Then gain on disposal of non-current investment that should find place in investment activity. So having done all these adjustments, let's see what happens. The net profit is now altered as that is in the previous year, what was 969.55 is now altered as 1307. And in the current year, 555.26 is now adjusted as 666.62. But still we are yet to give effect for the changes in working capital items. Look at this. If there is an increase in trade receivable that will be subtracted, decrease in trade receivable, it will be added because decrease in trade receivable means to that extent money has come in and increase in trade receivable means to that extent money has not come in, but it was captured as sales and it has boosted the profit. Okay. So look at here. So in both cases, it is positive number. It means debtors have come down. So to that extent, cash has come into the business. Look at the next item, decrease in inventory. Decrease in inventory is added, increase is subtracted. So here also what we can infer is in both the years, inventory is decreased. Then uh, look at this, uh, loans and advances. Increase means again outflow, decrease means inflow. So here there is a small increase in the previous year, there was a decrease. And look at the other items, increase or decrease in trade payables, other liabilities, provisions. Yeah, now listen. Trade payables, when you compare the trade payables of the current year with the previous year, if there is going to be decrease, it means what? To that extent, you have paid off the trade payables. Okay, that's why the decrease is considered as a negative item, that is outflow item. 
So here in both the years, what you see is decrease. It means to that extent they have paid off the trade payables, other liabilities and provisions. So after doing all this adjustment, what do you get? You get cash generated from operations. So look, previous year the profits is 969, but overall cash generated from operation is only 823. But in the current year, if you look at it, profits is only 555, but if you look at the overall cash generated from operations, it is 1624. Profit is only one third of it. In the previous year, profit is 969, but cash generated is only 823. In the current year, profit is 555, whereas cash generated is 1624. How did this happen? Whether they made so many, so much of profit? No, no, no. It's not related with profit. They made so much cash from operations in the current year because there is a substantial decrease in trade and other receivables. Look at here. In the previous year, the decrease in trade and other receivables is only 853 crore, but in the current year, it is 1,355 crore. Of course, decrease in inventories, it is uh, very close when you compare with the previous year, but look at here, there is a significant difference. And when you compare the decrease in trade payables, there is a payout that happened for uh, settling the creditors in the previous year they have settled 1711 crore but in the current year they have settled only 824 crore so on one side there is a significant uh, decrease in trade receivables so because of that there is a cash inflow and all the inflows are not used for paying the suppliers or trade payables because when you compare it with the previous year only 50 percent payment have happened Okay, it means to that extent money is available for circulation. That's why the cash generated from operations of the current year is greater than the previous year. And now you can see what is the tax they have exactly paid. Okay, so this is the direct tax paid, which is a net position. Previous year it is triple 2.47, in the current year it is 67.25, and this is the net cash generated from operating activity. Previous year it is only 601 crore, whereas in the current year it is 1557 crore. So, on look, profits have come down, but cash generated from operations is really, really comfortable. This happened mainly on account of two reasons. One, there is a significant decrease in trade receivables which has brought in substantial cash and the payment towards trade payables was not as bigger like previous year okay even with the dismal or minimal profit they were able to obtain good net cash from operating activity which is much much better than the previous year that's about cash flow from operating activity let's see what's happening in the cash flow from uh, investment activity and before that uh, one thing we did here right this investment uh, sorry interest and dividend from investments these two uh, we deducted under operating activity with the reason that it should be added under investment activity okay now let's try to understand this okay look at this cash flow from investment activity in the previous year they had uh, investment they were undertaking some purchase of property plant and equipment and all for 166.07 crore Whereas in the current year, it just got doubled. It is 372.29 crore. It means they are on some expansion mode. They are purchasing some plant uh, property equipment and all. Okay, that's happening on one side. And in the previous year, they had some sale of uh, property. So there was a cash inflow of 0.6 crore. In the current year, uh, there is a small outflow in that name. Okay, this is uh, something important. In the previous year, they had an inflow of 403.86 crore. Uh, out of uh, loans that were given to subsidiaries jointly controlled entities and all but in the current year there is a outflow around 1169 crore has gone as loans to subsidiaries let's see how it is funded okay then loans to others previous year it was 11.44 crore loans given in the current year it is 1.66 crore then uh, proceeds from sale or redemption of investment in subsidiaries okay they have sold some investment in subsidiaries and they got 37.4 crore inflow then let's look at investment made in subsidiaries associates in the previous year they have invested 300.59 crore in the current year it is 329.95 crore 
then gain from sale or redemption of investment in others okay so they they made a gain of 8.68 crore in the previous year current year it is 0.72 crore then we have withdrawal or investment in llps uh, investment means uh, outflow within bracket okay in the previous year they have withdrawn 56.06 crore but in the current year they have invested 195.06 crore okay then withdrawal or investments in current deposit previous year they have uh, withdrawn the investments to the extent of 163.28 crore in the current year they have withdrawn 45.06 crore next interest and dividend from investment these are all the items which were deducted under operating activity for the reason they should be added under investment activity similarly interest received let's cross check that look at here there is an interest income 366.24 365.50 but that is the interest income which is credited following the accrual concept okay but what can be shown under investment activity is interest received not accrued so look at here accrued is 366.24 that was created in pnl now that is adjusted under operating activity and what was actually received is 366.82 crore and previous year it is 375.45 crore okay fine now let's look at the total position previous year it is uh, inflow of uh, 91.27 crore in investment activity whereas in the current year it is outflow of 1317.55 crore now let's try to digest this why there is an outflow of 1317.55 crore what significant investment they have made if you analyze they have given substantial loans to subsidiaries jointly controlled entities and they have also made investments in subsidiaries jointly controlled entities so on one side loan cash outflow on the other side they are making investment in subsidiaries okay uh, even though they have inflows they are very small they are also continuously on capex the inflows if at all coming one is interest the other one is withdrawal that they have made in llps and uh, some proceeds or redemption of investment in subsidiaries but uh, there is a significant cash outflow so when compared with the previous year where there was an inflow of 91.27 crore here there is an outflow so the question is how this outflow was funded let's see financing activities also here we will be having all the cash flows where this particular entity has raised money from various parties and paid them and also paid the interest dividend everything look at here proceeds or repayment of current loan from subsidiary related parties it means they are also taking loan from subsidiaries related parties and repaying if you look at previous year they have borrowed from subsidiary related parties 362.10 crore whereas in the current year they have repaid 976.47 crore next one is proceeds or repayment from current borrowings previous year it was a repayment whereas in the current year it is borrowing then proceeds from issue of non convertible debenture in the current year they have raised funds of 559.63 crore by issuing non convertible debenture then proceeds from non current borrowings non current borrowing means they need not be repaid within one year previous year they borrowed 900 crore current year they borrow 930.75 crore then repayment of non current borrowings okay so this is the borrowal position and repayment previous year what they repaid is 520.74 crore current year what they have repaid is 1384.13 crore and then finance cost paid previous year it is 373 current year it is 479 or say 480 then dividend previous year they have paid dividend current year no dividend paid then lease liability previous year so much current year so much all these are within brackets so whatever the items we have discussed in this sheet are within brackets it means they are outflows then interim dividend previous year they have paid the so huge dividend current year nothing okay now if you total this it's a total outflow of 422.4 crore in the previous year that is under financing activity they have paid 422.4 crore in the current year they have paid 632.09 crore okay so this is the net position under 
financing activity also. Now let's try to understand how they have managed the show. I think it's all from cash flow from operating activity and it is mainly attributable to the uh, decrease in trade receivables because in cash flow from operating activity they generated cash of 1557 crore of which they have used 1317 crore for investment purposes it means they are left with some 200 plus crore okay and uh, for financing activity they consumed 632 crore it means from this 1557 if you subtract this 1317 and uh, if you subtract this 632 also there will be a shortage of 392.38 crore so the question is how this shortage was funded very easy at the beginning of the year they had 411.08 crore which is nothing but the closing position of the previous year so they had 411.08 crore of that they managed this gap okay or this difference and at the end of the year they are left with 18.7 crore so what we can make out here is they generated a lot of money from operations which is uh, three times or uh, close to three times of what they made last year and they have used a significant portion of that money for giving as loans to subsidiaries for investing in subsidiaries okay and uh, they also used a significant portion of this for repaying their uh, subsidiary loans or loans taken from related parties and because of this at the end they had a negative position of 392 crore but still they had a opening cash and cash equivalence of 411 crore so they were able to manage that also and they ended up having 18.7 crore as cash and cash equivalence at the end of the year.